Hello, we are Cal Poly Pomona Broncos for the CPP AUVSI Technical Design and Flight Readiness Review. Uh, today, you have David Charles, myself, and Richie Nguyen presenting this to you. Our team consists of 14 undergraduate students, with Edgar Sandoval being our project lead, myself being the chief engineer, Isaiah Klein as our airdrop lead, with Villard and Alex under him, Nicholas Ferrara being our flight path lead, Aaron Zuckerman being our UAV design lead, with Paloma Rubio also on the UAV design team, Mark Cruz as our image recognition lead, with Richard, Jason, and Chloe on that team, Richie Nguyen as our systems engineering lead, and John as our safety pilot. Uh, for our aircraft, we're using the Inspired Flight AF-1200A hexacopter with a uh, total takeoff weight of 46.9 pounds, two 16,000 milliamp hour lithium smart batteries, uh, experimental maximum flight time of 31, almost 32 minutes, a maximum flight distance of 13.44 miles, and a maximum payload weight of 19 pounds. Using a Canon PowerShot SX720HS as our camera, and then NVIDIA Jetson TX2 as our onboard processor, we built a custom gimbal and 3D printed our drop mechanism for the system. And for software, we're using our QGround control to control our Ardu pilot system on board, and HEAR3 GPS for our navigation system. Here we have our key system level requirements from the documentation provided by uh, SUAS. So UAV shall have a max takeoff weight of 55 pounds or less. Uh, autonomously terminate flight after three minutes of communication loss. Shall fly 12 miles at fully loaded weight in a single flight. Autonomous pay waypoint navigation must have a maximum aero threshold of 25 feet. We must be able to operate from a 70 foot by 600 foot runway. We shall detect, classify, and localize standard emergent objects. And five UAV airdrops shall land gently and safely and not pose any danger to humans in the present area. For our derived requirements, we assume that the aircraft must be capable of cruising at a velocity of at least 35 feet per second to meet the 12 mile requirement. Our system must be supplied with enough power to be airborne for at least 30 minutes to fill as much of that flight window as possible. Our payload must have a descent velocity of less than 20 feet per second before impact. This is what we determined to be the maximum speed to not damage the uh, drop. The UAV shall be capable of delivering a payload within a 15-foot radius and up to 10 mile an hour winds. This is to account for the expected winds upon the competition. And we must be capable of safe flight and up to 15 mile an hour wind conditions. This is to uh, put up with anything beyond that 10 mile an hour winds we expect. Here we have our design overview. And so we take off, we perform uh, obstacle avoidance at all points during our flight. We have ground communication using a 2.4 gigahertz connection for control and a 5 gigahertz connection for image data. At all points, we have GPS UAS connection using GPS satellite systems. Uh, we perform our airdrop after we perform our object detection system. We drop our system, and once we've dropped all five of our payloads, we return back to our ground station. Here we have our communications layout. So on board, we're communicating with our transmitter using a 2.4 gigahertz radio link. Well, this has a marketed range of 3.45 miles with a throughput of 8 megabits per second. This communicates our navigation guidance and controls, as well as our telemetry. On the ground, we're communicating using a local 2.4 gigahertz network with our ground station running Q ground control. And we're also communicating on the ground using a Cat5 wired system with our ubiquity, ubiquity bullet system, which communicates using a 5 gigahertz radio uh, uh, onboard the aircraft to communicate our object detection and drop data. That has a marketed range of 30 miles with a throughput of 25 megabits per second. And then onboard, we have our onboard object detection, localization, and classification system communicating once again using a wired system. So for our imaging and ODLC, we are using the PowerShot SX720HS as our camera. It has a dimension of 6.3 by 5.7 by 2.4 inches and weighs about half a pound. It has a zoom factor of 40 times and uses intelligent IS for image stabilization during flight. It's capable of 20.3 megapixels and has six image processors for better image quality and higher resolution. For our custom 3D printed gimbal, it was fitted to house the camera and has a yaw range of plus or minus uh, 135 degrees and a pitch range of 0 degrees to 135 degrees. To achieve this, we use two servo motors. So how it works is that it uses a machine learning model to filter out hundreds of sample images to detect targets. It becomes more accurate with more images in its library, and it's currently training with a thousand unique images. Uh, it's capable of holding, a, holding about uh, 3,600 images and can detect colors, letters, and shapes. 
so far through testing, its minimum expected level of confidence is about 70%. As you can see in the picture with the W, uh, it's still not able to detect our object with humanoid obstructions, so we will have to take measures to account for that. And then the last thing that we have to do with this is to integrate it into our aircraft. So for our airdrop mechanism, we are using a five chamber cylinder design. It has a diameter of three inches and a height of eight and a half inches. This was made to fit a uh, standard 16.9 uh, ounce water bottles that will be used in our competition. When it's empty, it weighs about five pounds. And when it's loaded with all five water bottles, it weighs about 11 pounds. For the hardware, we are gonna be using five servo motors to open and close each of the hatches. And to control it, we're gonna be using a Raspberry Pi Model B. To power this system, it's going to be using a 2250 milliamp hour battery. And for the software that we're going to be using for the Raspberry Pi, we're going to code it in uh, C++. It will also be coded to interface with the camera system. Our parachute will be made out of nylon and will have a diameter of 30 inches. It was initially sized uh, for an impact velocity of 20 feet per second. However, we're going to be resizing it for a vertical impact velocity of 15 feet per second to account for wind drift. So here we have an overview of our aircraft. We're going to be using the IF-1200A hexacopter. It has a Blue Cube H7 flight controller that uses RD Pilot as its operating software, and the HERE 3 GNSS as its uh, GPS. It has a 2.5 meter horizontal precision accuracy and comes with two 16,000 milliamp hours lithium smart batteries. Its dimensions are 65.1 by 60.6 by 30.2 inches, and it comes with uh, six 22 inch propellers. It's made out of uh, modular carbon fiber and aluminum to keep it lightweight and durable and has an operating weight of uh, 47 pounds. On the bottom right, we have a table of the parameters of the aircraft. It has a max takeoff weight of 55 pounds, a max payload weight of 19 pounds, a max ground speed of 73 feet per second, a max ascent speed of 16.4 feet per second, a max descent speed of 8.2 feet per second. And through testing, we found that its range and endurance with a fully loaded uh, payload of 11 pounds to be uh, 15 miles and 32 minutes. For our autopilot, we're going to be using the Q ground control and RV pilot. Uh, these two together uh, are capable of mission planning and control. With this, we can plot waypoints, plan missions, and even control our aircraft if we need to. It can perform automated pre-flight checklisting and also allow us to change flight modes between manual and automatic. We can also change our view from map view to video view. Um, the display also shows us the statuses of GPS, battery, and uh, the vehicle so that we know the health of our system. It can also display information like the tele telemetry, camera, video, and the system health. And then on the right side, we see our ground station. The controller and computer will have the same function. However, the controller will be held by our safety pilot, John, in case he needs to take over. All of our commands will then be sent through the aircraft to the aircraft through the AirMax AC radio antenna. Uh, this diagram gives us a step-by-step -step process on how the obstacle avoidance system works. The Raspberry Pi commands the stepper motor to spin at a set rate for the LiDAR to sweep the aircraft surroundings. Uh, the LiDAR system then scans and detects potential obstacles in the air at an angle, angular resolution of less than 1 degree and a frequency of about 2000 Hz. Uh, the data is then sent to the Raspberry Pi so that the coordinates of the potential obstructions can be calculated and uploaded, uploaded to QGround control. Here we have our alternative architecture, which is last year's model. We decided to not go with this design because it doesn't quite meet the mission requirements of this year. However, if something does happen to our uh, current aircraft, we can fall back to this one if we really need to. Here we have our safety risks and mitigations. Uh, the main developmental risk that we had was the loss of the entire image recognition team, which severely halted the developmental progress of our image recognition system, as well as the collision avoidance system. However, luckily, we were able to acquire uh, new members around last week, and this will continue the progress of these systems. Um, our second developmental risk was the premature release of the payload, which ca were caused by uh, problems with the airdrop mechanism. An example of this was uh, during one of the testings, uh, the airdrop mechanism ran out of battery and had a premature release, which ended up uh, damaging our water bottle. For this, uh, the airdrop mechanism will be repeatedly tested to ensure its reliability, and the team will make sure that the device is fully charged before the mission starts. For our mission risk, uh, we have uh, windy conditions resulting in an unsafe uh, flight environment. For this, the team will test the aircraft in various weather conditions to ensure that it is capable of flight within the competition environments. For our second mission risk, uh, is the, the aircraft will fly out of uh, the mission flight bounds. Um, to mitigate this, we implemented a failsafe with 
so that if it exits the mission boundaries, it will automatically return home. Um, as stated in the previous slide, the loss of our entire image recognition team has severely hindered our progress with the algorithm development. So because of this, we don't have any metrics to share. However, since we acquired a few new members, we are expecting to have results by the time of the competition. The same can be said about our obstacle avoidance system. However, currently we are using a human observer on the ground to make sure that uh, the aircraft stays safe. Uh, here we have our drop test data. The video on the right shows our test at 80 feet with the black asphalt as our target. We consider a drop successful if the payload lands safely within a 15 feet radius of our target, and we consider it a failure if the payload is out of bounds or destroyed. For the first set of tests, we conducted it at 10 miles per hour wind speeds. Um, for the first five, uh, we conducted it at 80, and at 80 feet altitude, where two failed because it landed out of bounds. And for the 120 feet drop test, all five were a failure because it were they were all out of bounds. Um, for the second set of tests, we conducted it in ideal conditions of uh, zero miles per hour winds. Um, this was conducted at uh, 60 feet uh, altitude. Out of these, uh, 17 were successful, and then there was three failures because the water bottles were destroyed. This gives us a total of uh, 20 successful drops out of the 30 drops that we conducted. Uh, for our communications performance, looking at our aircraft command and telemetry communications on the 2.4 gigahertz uh, frequency, we tested the maximum range up to 0.4 miles. Uh, during these tests, we have an average data rate sent of 6.8 megabits per second, and an average throughput of 6.8 megabits per second with a packet loss below 0.01% below what we could detect. For our aircraft video and object detection data communications on the five gigahertz network, we also tested up to 0.4 miles. We had an average data rate of 22.5 megabits per second. Our average throughput was down to 22.2 with a packet loss on average of 1.33%. And with our uh, on the ground 2.4 gigahertz network between our ground station and our controller, we tested the maximum of 30 feet. We have an average data rate of 15.7 megabits per second and an average throughput of 15.3 giving us a packet loss of 2.55%. All right, for aircraft performance, uh, looking at the requirements set by the competition, we had fully loaded range of 12 miles. We achieved 13.44. Maximum waypoint error, we're required to meet 25. The most we saw in our testing was 3.2. For turn radius, we're expected to turn within 150 feet. Because we're a multi-rotor, we turned in zero. Climb and descent angle, at least 20 degrees. Because we're a multi-rotor, again, we were able to do it in 90 degrees climb and descent angle. Our flight ceiling needs to be at least 75 feet. We're restricted to 400, but we tested up to 400 feet. Runway size needs to be uh, below 70 feet by 75 feet. And in our testing, we were regularly operating off of 10 foot by 10 foot runways. Uh, for our de derived performance requirements, we derived a cruise velocity of at least 35 feet per second. During our flight tests, we cruised regularly at 52. Fully loaded endurance of at least 30 minutes. We achieved 32 minutes during our range and endurance testing. And high wind testing, we wanted to test in at least 15 mile an hour winds, and we achieved that during our tests. So we performed a total of 10 test flights with a total of four flight test hours. For our autopilot performance, we performed six autonomous flight tests. The average manual control per flight was about 5%. This was typically uh, returning home manually, landing manually, or returning to the start point manually. We attempted a total of 205 waypoints. We considered 200, all 205 waypoints as hit with an average error within our waypoints of 0.8 feet. And the biggest error we saw during our testing was 3.2. All right, for our mission testing, because our image recognition system and obstacle avoidance systems are not ready because of the loss of key members on our team, we were unable to do fully integrated testing of our system. However, we have performed uh, all of our operations that we, all of our flight tests within 30 minute time periods between starting the, putting the aircraft down on the ground and landing it back on the ground. Uh, we're planning to use four operators, the, the ground control operator, the safety pilot, as well as an object detection operator, as well as uh, with our current state of obstacle avoidance, we are planning to use an on the ground obstacle avoidance observer. Airdrop system is currently in testing as well as our image recognition system as mentioned. With the current state of our system, we're expecting to achieve at least 40% of the available points. However, we are expecting to make progress on our 
image recognition and obstacle avoidance systems. And we're hoping to raise that by the time of the competition. Here we have a 10,000 feet uh, flight demonstration for our proof of flight video. Our safety pilot is John, and the aircraft ID is the IF-1200A. So here we have a manual takeoff and flight. This was sped up to, to about five times to save up on time. Around this point is where we reached 1,000 feet. This is played at normal speed. Here we turn back and I sped this up by eight times so that we save up on time. Here's our landing and then mission's complete. For this one, we have our 200 feet flight demonstration. Here we have our autonomous takeoff and flight. This is sped up to four times. At this point, we reach 200 feet and now we are turning back. And here we have our full 12 mile autonomous flight demonstration. This is to show that all the systems work as intended. Here we have our autonomous takeoff. The full video would be played to show that we completed our mission. This was sped up to about 16 times speed because otherwise we'd be here for about 25 minutes. And then due to the limited airspace, we conducted the test in a zigzag pattern. At this point, we transition to our manual landing after completing our rounds. And that would conclude our mission for our demonstration. Ultimately, the loss of key members uh, for our, Im our image recognition and obstacle avoidance team has been a major setback for our project. Recently, we've acquired new members to fill these roles, and we're expecting completion and full system integration within the next two to three weeks. For airdrop system, parachute system resizing delayed the integrated drop system testing, and that's currently being conducted during our flight testing. Uh, our aircraft, autopilot, and communication systems, however, those are completed, fully integrated, fully tested, and requirement compliant as of FRR.